All right, moving into unit three. Unit three is gonna focus on two specific types of functions, and that would be linear functions and quadratic functions. Um, a lot of what we're gonna do today is a review of some things that we did before. Um, and eventually we're gonna be looking at um, data and constructing a model, a linear model or a linear equation that would represent some data. So basically, um, the definition of a linear function, um, even more than a definition, we'll just write the equation y equals mx plus b. Okay, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. In every linear function, the domain is all real numbers. There are no restrictions. In linear functions, you're not going to see square roots. You're not going to have variables on the denominator that could end up being zero. So for every linear function, our domain is going to be all real numbers. So here it asks us to graph the linear function f of x, and remember f of x is the same as y, equals negative 3x plus 7. In this case, we know the slope is negative 3 and the y-intercept is 7. So just simply graphing, I'm always going to start with the y-intercept. I'm going to go up 7, put a dot on the y-axis, and my slope is negative 3 which tells me I'm gonna go down three and over to the right one. So down three over one, down three over one. Okay. Technically, we need to have two points to make a line, but it's nice to have um, some other points just to see where our line is going, so. This would be our line. And notice it does extend, so we need to have the arrows here. And I just want to address the domain again. Any x value that we put in our function is going to give us a y value. So we can put in an x value that is way out to the side here. I could use 23, I could use 107. Okay, any x value will work. And same thing with negative. I can put in negative 105 and calculate and I will get a y value. We addressed average rate of change in the last unit and we know that that is the same as slope. And we can look at this as the change of y sorry, change of y over the change in x. And remember these little triangles here actually represent the Greek symbol delta. So changing y over change in x. I could write y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but all of this is still the slope. Okay. So when we talk about average rate of change, we are talking about slope. In example two, we see a set of data. And what is at, what they're asking us to do is to find the average rate of change in the data in the table below. And if we look between these values, between zero and one, I'm going up one, between one and two, I'm going up one, and between all of these values, I'm always increasing by one. 
if I look at the difference between the y values, and it, let's think of 0.12 as being y2 minus y1, this shows I'm going up 0 0.03. Between 0.12 and 0.16, I'm going up 0 0.04. Between 16 and 22, I'm going up 0 0.06. Between 22 and 29, 0 0.07. And between 0.29 and 0.39, I'm going up 0 0.10. So if I were to look at the, the Y values, I'm not going up the same amount each time. Okay? So my x values are going up the same amount each time, but my y values are not. So this is not a rate of change that is constant. Okay. All of these numbers are going up by different amounts. So if an average rate of change is constant, the function is linear. But here, if I'm looking at the different slopes, and if I think about slope as being y over x, if I look at the y over x values here, the change in these y values over the change in these x values is 0 0.03 over 1. This one would be 0 0.04 over 1, 0 0.06 over 1. So because my rate of change is not the same, that's what constant means. If it's not the same, this is not linear. All right, looking at the next set of data, I have um, x values that are representing some age and I have Y values that are representing the maximum number of heartbeats, All right? So if I look at the difference between how X is changing, and it looks like X is going up 10 each time. 50 to 60 is plus 10. 60 to 70 plus 10. And if I look at how this is changing, from 50 to 47.5, I'm going down 2.5. From 47.5 to 45, I'm going down 2.5. And I can also think of this as Y2 minus Y1. So if I did 47.5 minus 50, I'm still going to get negative 2.5. If I did 42.5 minus 45, I'm going to get negative 2.5. 40 minus 42.5 is negative 2.5. So each x value is going up 10, and each y value is going down 2.5. So if I'm looking at the change in Y over the change in X, my Y values are going down to negative 2.5, and my X values are going up 10. Okay, so this would be considered my slope. And they're all doing the same thing. So because they're all doing the same thing, my rate of change is constant. 
R of C, rate of change. So I have a constant rate of change, which means this data is linear. This represents a linear function. On the next page, we have increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. If a function is increasing, it's going up from left to right. It has a positive slope. If it is decreasing from left to right, it is decreasing. And it has a negative slope. And if a function is a constant function, I have a horizontal line. And my slope is zero. Okay, remember um, back in the last section, we looked at horizontal lines and the slope of those were zero. In example three, we're just determining whether the following linear functions are increasing, decreasing, or constant. So up here, when I was describing um, those functions, I paid specific attention to the slope. If it's a positive slope, it's increasing, negative slope is decreasing, and slope of zero is constant. So in this case, we know the slope is always the number multiplied by x, okay? So the slope here is five. It is positive five, so this is increasing. Kind of a simple concept here. In this function, g of x, negative 2x plus 8, my slope is negative 2, and because it's negative, it's decreasing. In part c, my slope is 3 fourths, and because this is a positive 3 fourths, this is increasing. And here, this is the same thing as zero times x plus seven. So if you don't see the x term here, the x term was multiplied by zero, so my slope is zero, and this would be a constant function. Okay, also a horizontal line. All right, very simple concepts here. And in example four, we are looking at a real life situation. So we can call this a mathematical model. And it describes a book value. The book value is the value of an asset that a company uses to create its balance sheet. Some companies depreciate. Depreciate means goes down. Some companies depreciate their assets using a straight line de depreciation so that the value of the asset declines by a fixed amount each year. The amount of the decline depends on the useful life that the company places on the asset. Suppose that a company just purchased a fleet of new cars for its sales force at a cost of $28,000 per car. The company chooses to depreciate each vehicle using the straight line method over seven years. That means that each car will depreciate, starting value is $28,000, and they are going over a term of seven years, so in a straight line depreciation, we would have $4,000 per year. So they're asking us to write a linear function that expresses, expresses the book value 
of each car as a function of its age. All right, so um, the first thing we need to do if we're writing a linear function, we need to identify what the slope is and what our y-intercept is. All right, so the, the slope we can look at right here and we know that the straight line depreciation is going to go down four thousand dollars per year so four thousand over one and it's decreasing so that would be negative four thousand over one our b value or our y-intercept is the initial value So in this case, the initial value of the car was $28,000. So they're asking us to graph it. And when I'm graphing, I really have to think carefully about my units. And we need to label our axes. And we know that one of our variables is um, the amount that the vehicle is worth. And another one of our variables is time, All right? So most of the time, time will be the independent variable. So we put that on the bottom and time is measured in years and over here we have the value of the car and we're going to measure that in thousands of dollars so I'm going to write here instead of writing ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars with all those zeros I'm going to write in thousands Of dollars all right so I know that my highest cost or my largest cost for the car is going to be 28,000 so if I were to measure up to 30,000 with this being ten thousands of dollars here's 20 thousands of dollars and here's 30 thousands of dollars and I know that I'm gonna go seven years with this car so I can measure out one two three four five six seven so going back to part a we identified the slope and the y-intercept but we really didn't write the function so in terms of the variable that they gave us, our value with respect to time is, and I know a lot of times we want to write the x value first, but let's think about the situation and we know we have a car that starts off with a value of $28,000 and we're going to subtract every year $4,000. And, whoops, our variable T is going to represent our years. So 28,000 minus 4,000 T. So if I were to measure, 28,000 is the initial cost, so that's after no time has gone by. All right, so if I were to just do a little chart here, for time, if no time has gone by, the car's value is $28,000. After one year, it's gone down $4,000, so this is $24,000. In two years, it's gone down another $4,000, so that's $20,000 thousand dollars right 
So if I start at 28, that would be up here somewhere, then I'm gonna go down $4,000. So 24,000 is about right here. And then after two years, we're at about $20,000. After three years, I'm gonna to go to 16,000. So if here's 15, 16 is close to that. After four years, I'm gonna go down to 12,000. After five years, I'm gonna be at 8,000. After six years, I will be at about 4,000. And at seven years, it's worth nothing. So if you can see, if I were to connect these dots, oops, I'm kind of drawing backwards here. This, if I turn here, we can have a better line. This is a linear function, okay? And I don't need to draw the arrows because I'm not going into the negative time and I'm not having a value of my car being below zero. So I can just connect the dots. In part C, it's asking us what the book value of each car is after three years. So in part C, three years is a value for T. So if T is three years, I go up to my equation and I plug in three for T. So I have 28,000 minus three times 4,000, which is 12,000. And this would be 16,000. So this means after three years, my car, the car would be worth $16,000. In part D, interpret the slope. Okay, the slope is going down, so this is a decreasing function. And it's decreasing by $4,000 for one year or for each year. Part E is asking us when the book value of the car will be worth $8,000. Now $8,000 is our V of T value or in normal terms, this is a Y value. So if I plug in 8,000 for V of T, so this is part E, I have 8,000 equals 28,000 minus 4,000 T. If I were to subtract 28,000, I'm going to get negative 20,000 equals negative 4,000 times t, and if I divide by negative 4,000, t is gonna be five, and our unit of time is in years. All right, so that is it for section 3.1.